Today I want to talk about how much fear plays a subconscious role in our everyday life and thoughts that we have and maybe things that we dread or things that seem like monumental concerns that aren't that big of a deal. And to illustrate this, I was just doing my taxes and uh, I just have to you know, go to H&R Block website, get them done, put the paperwork in the envelope, write a check, mail it off, and that's not a big deal. But I find that I procrastinate and I don't want to do it. And I take this task, which is not really a very big deal. You know, I live a pretty simple life. I don't have a lot of itemizations or deductions that I have to figure out. It's not like there's anything complicated about doing my taxes. All I do is plug in the basic forms and print it off, mail it, and it's it's done. And yet, it feels like kind of a big deal to me. And I was thinking about, you know, why is that? What is it that makes doing my taxes feel like a burden? Why is it something that I want to put off? And the reason probably is related to the fact that there have been times in my life when maybe I would worry about whether I'd have enough money to pay what I owed on my taxes. It was a time when I would, I would dread because I'd potentially have to pay money that I didn't have and or or maybe I, you know, barely had enough money and so I was kind of concerned, you know, am I going to have enough to, to cover the cost or I would have to file an extension or something and try to work it out to, to get the amount I owed paid, hopefully in time or shortly thereafter. And it was just all in all a negative experience. And so I came to have a fundamental dread of it and I associated it with not having the ability to do what I needed to do in my life. Now, fast forward to today, and that really isn't a material concern. Like there's there's zero concern in my mind that I'm not gonna have enough money to pay my taxes. Thankfully, life has kind of worked out differently and, and I'm not in that situation anymore. But subconsciously, I still have the same sense of subconscious dread associated with the experience of doing taxes every year. And I think that's not the only thing that affects me in that kind of a way where there's something that's not a big deal, it's not terrible, it's not even hard, but it feels hard. Emotionally, it feels hard. You know, maybe another good example would be dreading to pick up the phone and have some kind of a work conversation or something like that. And it's not that the conversation is hard. It's not that it's difficult. Like, there's nothing about it that's a really big deal. And it's not hard. And yet, there's that sense of kind of dread. You know, what if I say the wrong thing? What if somebody doesn't like what I have to say? And looking back, it's again traced back to probably a time in my life when maybe I didn't actually have the ability to successfully do what I needed to do or I was afraid of doing something because I didn't know how. But then time passes and eventually you get to a 
point where you do know what you're doing. You do know how to do the various things that you're asked to do. There's no real problem anymore, but there's still that sense of what if I let somebody down? What if I fail? What if I am not good enough? And when we start to go through our lives and we're always chased by these demons of the past, things that are just kind of haunting us on a low level in the back of our minds, making us feel like we need to be more concerned than we really ought to be. It just all adds up to baggage. Baggage we don't even really know that we're carrying. I think it's important to be aware of those things. Doesn't mean that they're gonna go away, but once you're aware of them, then you kind of know what's going on and you can put yourself in check. You can dismiss some of these more toxic thoughts and ideas that manifest in your life so that you're the master of them versus them just being a, a burden on you. And if you live your life honestly and you have integrity in the things that you're doing, there really isn't a lot to fear in the world. The worst case scenario is just that maybe something doesn't go the way you want it to. But is that really a, a, a big deal? I, I don't think so. I think our, our fear in life is not that we fail so much as it is that maybe we're imposters or fake that we don't deserve success because you know we weren't ever really good enough and even if we were successful we don't deserve success it's kind of like you know when i was when i was a child i was always told i wasn't good enough and that's kind of the, the way I was raised and so that carried over into a subconscious belief that I wasn't good enough and then in life that lent itself to a tendency for me to feel like if I'm successful at something that's just because I was lucky and it was a fluke deal and then if something bad happens well that's just kind of basically reality catching up so that you know that's a cloud that that adds a lot of weight to put on your shoulders and the more you get over that i think the, the better off you are and if you can be honest and just you know acknowledge what you are acknowledge what you're not but don't have that sense that you're just kind of chronically not good enough or that circumstances are stacked against you or if they're not stacked against you, they should be stacked against you. Kind of just let go of those things. It's, it's really important because a lot of the times our lives are not that bad, you know, and it depends on the individual. Sometimes people's lives are bad. You know, sometimes something bad happens and it's just a really, really tough situation. But for a lot of us, and, and probably most of us, if, if you're sitting here watching some kind of a YouTube video while I ramble about life while I play a video game, you know, you're probably not in a, you know, you're probably not, probably not as bad off as some, you know, most of us are doing okay. The point that's the point i'm getting at most of us are doing okay but the biggest thing that keeps us up at, at night the biggest thing that scares us it's it's what could happen you know it's that sense of what if something bad happens that i'm not prepared for what if something terrible happens and then you know all of the all the cards are called in and, and i'm in trouble then what am i going to do um that's, that's the fear. 
The fear is what if something bad happens? What if the worst case scenario happens? What if I'm not prepared for it? What if I can't cope with it? And the reality is typically the worst case scenario doesn't happen. Typically we live our life in fear of the worst case scenario, while in reality life in the moment is not actually that bad. In the moment we have the tools we need to find strength for the current day. Usually even when we face adversity, even when something terrible does happen, we are able to cope. We do find the strength we need for real life problems, real life adversity. When it manifests itself, when it shows up, we figure it out. Because we are, as human beings, very resilient, very able to deal with things. You'd be surprised how much people accomplish to overcome adversity, to overcome challenges, to find a way to be okay, even in circumstances which really are not okay. I was, I was reading a, an article about conjoined twins, and, and I guess these two girls basically are one woman's body, but there's two heads there, and so basically it's two women and, and one body, and they have two heads, and, but they don't have two of anything else. And so it's it's basically, you know, like a two-headed woman only. It's, it's two women, but, but one body. Now, that's so weird to, to think this could even happen. But apparently it does. Something like, you know, once in every couple hundred thousand people, you have a situation where this can happen. And both survive and they live. And then they have to figure out, okay, how are we going to live with this situation we're in? Anyway, there's these two girls that are conjoined twins, and they've been that way, and they've been followed. And I guess that they got married. And I don't, I don't even know how that works, you know. One of them got married, and the other one, I guess, didn't. Uh, I don't know. She's along for the ride. So that, that's a wild kind of situation. But... The point I'm getting at is, you know, how many of us in that situation, like, what if, what if I said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna take your body, you're gonna lose your body, we're gonna take your head, and we're gonna stick it on somebody else, and you are gonna share a body with another person for the rest of your life, as, uh, you know, a head with, with no body that's a hundred percent yours, and then, you know, would you be able to? work it out and figure out a way to be resilient enough on some level to be okay on any level i don't know like most of us like we we freak out because some little thing went wrong that isn't going our way and it's little stuff like you know um i don't know like what happens if i get a flat tire you know, like that's the kind of stuff that we worry about. And then there's people who have no arms and legs or, or something crazy. And you look at them and you realize, you know, these people have managed to survive and, and maybe even to some degree thrive despite insane adversity. It's that way with people who go to war, people, it's normal people. You know, like I think about this often. There's this notion of the greatest generation that served during World War II in that particular time. And, and it's said that they were these great men who went to fight in, a fight in the war. And I wouldn't doubt it that they were. But you know what else is true? They weren't really great in the sense that they started off as fundamentally different than anybody else. They were just boys that went off to war because that's what was going on. That's what they were called on to do. Probably a lot of them were even drafted into the service or they were encouraged to get into the service and they didn't really know what they were signing up for. Um, you know, I saw a meme and it said that basically like in, in World War II, there were men lying about their age so that they could go fight in the war. And today we have men um, 
who are uh, you know too busy playing video games to to be willing to sacrifice anything you know now that was just taking a jab at the current generation and, and there's always that sort of a thing and i get it i get it because i see plenty of people who i think are pretty spineless pretty unwilling to make any kind of sacrifices in their life and i think a lot of people have gotten a little bit soft because for many of us in first world countries we've gotten to have a lot of privileges you know like like we don't quite often have to worry about being molested or harmed by conflict we usually don't have anything worse to fear other than maybe being poor or something like that but for the greater part we're able to have cell phones and play video games and have pretty comfortable lives largely compared to some other people who maybe have to worry about basic needs at a level that some of us just never have had to to worry about like i was saying earlier you know i i have enough money to pay my taxes and i have this little bit of um, anxiety because i don't want to pay my taxes and i don't want to do the paperwork and stuff and you know that's such a such a really ridiculously small problem compared to maybe somebody who's worried about whether they're going to be able to find enough food to be able to to survive or keep their child alive or something like that uh, which is true in some parts of the world people do have to face that kind of adversity but the point i'm getting at and i was talking about people serving in war there for a minute the, the point i'm getting at is that it wasn't really extraordinary people that were signing up to fight in wars back in world war ii it was just normal people doing normal things trying to make their way in the world and a lot of the kids that signed up to go fight in the war they didn't even know what it was like to fight in a global conflict and to watch many many people around them die and then come out of the war permanently scarred quite often um, there was a lot to be said for the fact that it was just normal people with a lot of everyday small time fears and concerns just like us today and then something bad happened something big happened and they got swept up in it and they found the strength and the resilience to be what they needed to be in the moment that they were thrust into and the same thing is true with us you know we have things that worry us we have things that maybe keep us up at night or things that we procrastinate on because we feel like we're not adequate or we we have a little bit of personal demons in play because of the way we were raised or self-doubt that just kind of lingers here and there but the truth is when the time comes and we need strength to face true adversity we will find the strength to adapt and to face it and to come out on the other side even if you have to face death and I, we all do have to face death at some point when it's time to die you have the strength to face death when it's not time to die then maybe the whole thought of dying seems like a real really terrible thing but we always figure out a way to do what we need to do to face what we need to face when the time is upon us to face those things so yeah, it's important to realize that we do have strength enough to face the challenges that, that we must face in life and then as for all the other things we shouldn't be too worried about them because most of our concerns are not that we don't have enough strength to face the moment right now our fears are that we won't have enough strength to face some unknown thing in the future 
It's that shadow around the corner, like when I was a kid and I was afraid of the monster that lived in the closet or the monster that lived under the, under the bed and want to go run quickly to the restroom because I needed to take refuge under the covers where I was safe from those imaginary monsters. And I think every kid has some kind of a story like that. You don't have to worry about the monsters you can't see. Just focus on the ones that are right there in front of you, and you might find that you go through your whole life and never really encounter any great monsters that are beyond your ability to bear or to face. Somebody said optimism is not the best policy, that we should be pessimistic about life because that's reality. And I, I agree, to a point, in the sense that you shouldn't put blinders on to the point where you refuse to acknowledge the truth because the only things you will acknowledge are things that align with what you want to hear. But it's also true that we can create the pessimistic culture of always seeing things through the lens of something bad is going to happen. It's so like a friend of mine who went out and he, he decided he's going to build a chicken coop. And he built this nice, fancy chicken coop. And he put more money into that chicken coop than any normal person should put into building a chicken coop. Like some people will build a little one that's you build it over the course of an afternoon with a little bit of chicken wire and a few two by fours and you call it a day. But this guy built like a mansion for chickens. It was 100%, you know, built on a concrete slab. It was like he built a garage dedicated to chickens. And then he built this heavy duty fence so that they could be there and no foxes could eat them. And it was just, you know, very solid. The only thing is, why is he doing this? Well, he was doing it because he has this idea. Okay, you know, supply chains are going to go bad, and I got to be self sufficient. I got to be able to take care of my family. I got to be ready for the end of the world if that happens. Right? So. I don't know how much money he put into this, but I'd, I'd imagine, you know, like he probably spent, you know, like something like maybe thousands of dollars, probably, to build this chicken coop. And then he put a bunch of money into all of the apparatus he would need to slaughter chickens and all of the apparatus he would need to harvest the eggs and kind of create his own little operation there and uh, that's fine but you know what the truth is the truth is he's just burning money that's all he's doing because he spent so much money getting that chicken coop built and getting all of this figured out, he could have bought himself basically a lifetime supply of chicken breasts and eggs from the Walmart with a fraction of the money he put into that whole operation, which he then has to finance on a monthly basis by continuing to buy more food for these chickens and all of the other things involved in that. The point I'm getting at is he's worrying about a non-existent problem that he's anticipating. It's that thought, okay, the world is going to end one of these days. It's all, all the house of cards is going to come tumbling down. And when that time comes, then I got to be able to have fresh meat and eggs. That's fine. But the reality is that disaster is hypothetical. The reality is 
it's just a lot of effort, it's a lot of labor, it's a lot of money put into something that really doesn't profit at all. Because if you look at the cost basis, you might as well just relax and go down to the store and get a dozen eggs if you need them. Life gets really complicated when we worry about the future so much that we allow it to cast a cloud over the present. When we live for today, then we don't worry too much. And when we don't worry too much, then a lot of problems just go away. It's like when I when I look at all of the things going on in the world, all the things in the news, you know, sometimes I pay attention to it just because it's kind of a hobby and I like to see what's going on. To a point, I pay attention to the news because it's a little bit relevant. Like I do, I do want to know what's going on in the world. I do want to know what might affect investments that I have. I want to know what might affect my own life. So I do have an interest in the news, both for hobby reasons, because it's interesting, and, and for legitimate business reasons, because sometimes you do need to know what's going on in the world. And yet the truth is, beyond a little bit of very simple follow-up, I don't need to pay that much attention to what's going on in the world. But once you go down the rabbit hole of paying a lot of attention to it, then every single day there's some kind of a crisis somewhere which is potentially going to be the next big thing that pushes us closer to the precipice. There are people who are making their entire livelihood, their entire lifestyle structured around that hypothetical situation of everything in the world falling apart. And then there's confirmation bias, where if that's what you're trying to find, if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you are thinking about all the time, then that's going to be what you see. That's going to be what you uh, manifest in your life. And there's a lot of people who just live their life through the lens of what is the next big problem that is going to be a storm cloud I need to prepare for. Now, is it bad to prepare for things? No, no it's not. By all means, you should have enough extra supplies so that if something happened and the store ran out of things, you're not going to be in trouble. I'm all for basic preparedness and getting ready for things on the front side so you're not trying to catch up on the back side. But these are pretty simple things. You don't have to make a lifestyle out of fear. And if you do find that you've done that, then it probably makes sense to take a few steps back and say, what am I doing? Enjoy the things you do. Do the best at what you're endeavoring to do right now. You go to work and do the best you can at the job that you're trying to do. If you have a hobby, do your best to succeed at the hobby that you have taken on for yourself. If there's a problem, do your best to overcome the challenge. But life shouldn't be something that is filled with foreboding. It's kind of like engaging in adventure quests in a video game. Maybe you don't know exactly how to beat the high-level boss. Maybe you don't know how to finish some particular puzzle in a quest line that you encounter. And usually those are pretty simple things like level up a little bit more and then you can come back and you can defeat the boss more easily. Or maybe it's just you have to give it some time and accept that there's a little bit of grinding to do. And don't worry about defeating the boss right now. Just keep on playing and you'll have more power or more resources you need to overcome that challenge later. Or 
maybe it's something more like you go on YouTube and you search how to figure out a puzzle and then you realize it was a lot simpler than you thought it was because other people have faced the same thing already and it's not so hard to get the information you need to solve the problem you have. But the main takeaway when you're questing is that it's all part of the game. And if something is challenging, that doesn't mean that you should feel sad or overwhelmed or frustrated. It just is a puzzle that you have to keep on working on. You Sometimes you don't make progress right now, and that's okay. You're going to come back to it, and eventually it makes more sense by and by. And when you start to look at life kind of like you would look at a quest in a game, suddenly these problems that we face, even if they are a little bit challenging, they're not really problems. Not problems in the sense that they mean life is broken. broken. Just problems in the sense that there's something for us to work on figuring out. Kind of like a math problem. Doesn't mean something's wrong, it's just a exercise we engage in so that we can complete the result that we're trying to achieve. Life should be viewed through the lens of solving problems strategically and having fun with the solving of them, not having a sense of fear that we're not good enough because they exist or because they could exist and there's nothing wrong with just enjoying the game today without any intention that you have to solve every quest in the game the quests are not there so that you can feel like your life is complete when you finish them all they're there so that you have something to do while you are there life wouldn't be very fun after all if we did not have any problems, any challenges, anything that we needed to do. So I think we can have a certain duality there to accept that life has things that are problems, and yet we don't have to view them as evidence that life is fundamentally broken. We can not want something to be a certain way and we can also not want life to be absolutely devoid of challenge just like you would want a game to have some level of challenge because why would you play it if there's absolutely no objective for you to pursue and that's that's the strange thing about it on one hand we we want things to go our way that's normal like you should want to win but do you want life to be devoid of challenge probably not not if you're honest so in the end life's pretty good just about the way it is and we should see that and when we when we're tempted to be afraid of things when we're tempted to have a sense of dread sometimes it's good just to remind ourselves we don't need to it's okay and once you realize that once you tell yourself that once you understand you don't have to be afraid of things just because there's things in life that are frightening then you might find there's a lot less frightening things after all and when you stop being afraid or maybe, maybe you don't stop being afraid. Maybe you still have a little bit of lingering doubt. It just doesn't, it doesn't consume you because you're the master of it. Then, as with all things, the various experiences we have in life help us to be better. And the challenges we have 
do not prevent us from being successful. They just give us perspective so that we can perhaps help other people who probably will face similar challenges to those we face. Wherever you find yourself, try not to be afraid, try not to be anxious, and try not to worry about tomorrow. Till next time, thanks for watching.